So um, do you think that this declaration of COVID-19 as a t- pandemic is too late? And um, how a single word like this is going to change how countries approach this virus? Thank you for having me. I think a, a lot of nations have already been reacting as if this is a pandemic. I mean, Australia has already uh, um, revealed its uh, pandemic plan and activated it, as has the UK and a number of other nations. So I don't think it's going to necessarily change our responses. There were two things the Director General said. The first thing was uh, he didn't want people to be afraid and panic, and I don't think that will happen. The level of concern that's been there for the last few days or weeks will will remain and not necessarily worsen. The other thing is that uh, we shouldn't have a defeatist attitude. Just because it's a pandemic doesn't mean we can't eventually contain it. Sure. I mean, well, Australia, you know, uh, might be um, doing a good job, but let's just turn our attention to Italy now, where reports are saying that health authorities are considering a possible age limit uh, on who gets ventilators in the worst hit areas, and they are looking at as young as 60. I mean, is there a concern that maybe Italy might uh, not have been that uh, ready for this pandemic? Oh, look, it's very unfortunate what is happening in in Italy, and uh, it's uh, quite a ferocious outbreak over there. There could be a couple of reasons we're seeing this. One is that Italy is known to have one of the oldest populations in Europe, if not in the world. And we know that older people are more likely to get uh, uh, a more severe illness. And uh, the other issue is that it's possible that a lot more cases were circulating in Italy before they started to identify the clusters they found in late February. Right. And, um, you know, countries um, like Singapore included are sort of um, have started these uh, social distancing measures. I mean, in in your opinion, just how effective is that? Look, social distancing will be effective. In uh, in fact, quarantine is a very effective measure in controlling or slowing an outbreak. Uh, But the question is when to bring it in, because there are political, social, psychological and economic consequences of doing that. And there are degrees of social distancing that one extreme, you can shut everything down, uh, sporting events, schools, universities, uh, but there may be more simple things one can do. So in the workplace, have people work from home, not a shaking of hands, people eating lunch at their desk instead of in a a common room. So so various things we can do. Mm. Uh, What's the latest update on uh, vaccine? Are we any closer to uh, maybe getting one by the end of the year? Look, we are getting closer, and though it's hard to believe, we're actually quicker than we've ever been at uh, developing vaccines and getting them out there, but that's still going to take quite a while. So some vaccines are very close to starting human trials where you uh, test safety and then you'll do bigger trials to test for uh, effectiveness, Uh, but we're still looking, I would have thought, at least 10 to 12 months before uh, you and I can take our families into the doctors to get a vaccine. Mm. Now, the U.S. official says that, you know, China's virus response has cost the world basically two months of preparation. Is that, is that a statement that uh, you agree with? I think at the end of this outbreak, everyone will sit down, as we do with any outbreak, even if there are two cases of salmonella in a small town diner, and you sit down and go through the outbreak and think, what could we have done better? I don't think now is the time for, for finger pointing and, and the blame game. And I think every country will look back and think we could have done things slightly better. I mean, China did a great job with, uh, uh, with the lockdown and reducing the cases. But yes, perhaps at the start, they could have done more.